everybody, I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guys, Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. And today, we're going to be going over a lot of stuff. But mostly, we're going to be talking about Monday Night Football. The Indianapolis Colts, ooh boy, are going to be hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. Gerard, what's your initial thoughts about this game upcoming? I mean, every, every week's a tough week. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Chargers, I don't think they're having the season that they expected to have, but been playing better football here late. Uh, got an up-and-coming, you know, superstar in Herbert, you know, big-time arm, can throw all, throw it all over the field, can make every throw in the book. Uh, probably going to make some throws that we probably haven't seen because he every week he does something with the football that you're just like, you know, it's only one other quarterback in this league that can throw it like that, and that's Pat Mahomes. Um, and then you look at the running back, Eckler, he's one of the better running backs in the league. He's been banged up early in the year, but seems like he's getting his groove back going. And, you know, Kenan Allen been in and out of the late, uh, lineup here here of late. And, you know, as as just like their other players seem like, you know, he's getting back healthy and into the rhythm as they're trying to fight for playoff uh, aspirations as well. So, I mean, it's going to be another difficult you know, challenge is going to be another difficult game. Uh, Rodney and the boys are going to have their hands full. They got weapons all over the field. Uh, should be another fun one. Should be, be another fun one to watch. And hopefully, you know, we can jump out on them just like we jump out on Minnesota, but finish it this time. Your thoughts, Rodney? Yeah, man. Dynamic, uh, very skilled offense. And, you know, it starts with 10. Justin Herbert, young, phenom, um, you know, is making – his presence felt in this in this league early on in his career, and as Gerard said, man, he can uh, throw the ball the the distance. You know, he can, you know, throw the the ball on the dime and the outcut. You know, he 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 makes some um, very great throws, and so you know, it's going to be a great challenge for us. You know, knowing they have a good skill group, Keenan Allen. You know, probably one of the the better route runners in the league for. You know, some some years now had the opportunity to go against him a few times. So know what I'm up against with there uh, with him. And, and then you got Mike Williams, you know, who's just a, a, a huge target. And, mm -hmm. you know, he was uh, the reason why, you know, they they had the chance to still win the game last week. Uh, I just watched film this morning and saw the way that game ended. You know, it, it was a throw that you wouldn't expect a quarterback to make. But he believes in 81 and he yeah. puts it in a great position. Defenders right on him, uh, throws it away from leverage uh, on the sideline and sets them up for uh, the, the field goal to win the game versus Tennessee. So, man, we, we have – we know what we're up against. Uh, even looking at the schedule, you just look like, yeah, it's, it doesn't get any easier as a defender, <laughs> man, especially as a defensive back. Like, you got to bring your best every week. Uh, we understand that. The lights are going to be bright Monday night. Uh, so, you know, we got to go out there and, and take care of business, you know, in our home stadium, something that, you know, I'm sad that we haven't been able to do a lot of is is really defend our home the way that we should. And so, you know, we got to make sure we do that come Monday night. And, and, and as Gerard said, man, start the way that we did last week, um, had that level of intensity, create turnovers, um, you know, but more importantly, man, close this game out the way that we know, you know, we should. Um, and really gain the respect back. I think that's the biggest thing is, is gain that respect back from, you know, the league um, and 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 uh, from viewers as well, everybody watching. The basketball is back. And Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, game trends at Bet Online. As your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting free contests and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. Bet online, where the game starts. Absolutely. Now, 
Yeah, after after the game that we had last week, uh, our last couple weeks, it would be very nice to be able to sit back after a game and just go, yeah. Nice Christmas won. gift. Yes, I mean, yeah. Nice absolutely. Christmas gift. I need that. Like, I mean, on. it'll be the day after Christmas, but that. that yeah, but it be... still counts. It yeah, still counts. It still and, counts. I, I, yeah. and I need, I need a pick. That's what I need. I'm close. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but well, Rodney Thomas almost had himself a uh, two picks yeah, last two, week. Uh, yeah. You know, Cause he had that one in the back of the end zone came off tip of his. Yeah. I fingers. told him, I said, man, what do you, I said, bro, you owe me. Come on, man. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay. I got I you a, this half, and then I had an old is. coach. I had an old coach tell me if you just catch the ones they throw to you, say you'll be a yeah. Pro Bowl every year. <laughs> but Rodney, man, you're definitely gonna get some opportunities. I mean, you already know they're gonna throw it 50 times, you know. So you definitely go get get your opportunities. <laughs> it don't matter. It, they don't got to be down 30 to do that. <laughs> no, and, and and yeah, you're right. And Herbert's not afraid to go deep to the to his no. guys either. So mm -hmm. you know, you, you it, last year. Last year, uh, watching Justin, I was like, this guy is a different person when pressure's on. Yeah. Like, completely different. Like, first and second down, he may or may not make the play. If it's fourth down, <laughs> and it's like fourth and 15, and the coach is putting him out there to make a play, he makes that damn play no matter what. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how does this dude do? I mean, that's unreal. The 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 kind of um, you know confidence that he has, exactly, yeah. especially yeah, at his uh, young age. Yeah, he's a hell of a talent. Know, you, yeah, you can't coach. You know, you can't coach that. That just comes from within, um, and really just belief. You know, he had confidence in himself and his abilities and and his play players that he has around him, and uh, you see that uh, on on full display uh, from him. But yeah, you don't really expect that you know, from a young player so early, uh, been able to do the things that he's able to accomplish uh, thus far. I mean, what's what's crazy about Justin Herbert's, you know, career so far is we weren't even supposed to see, you know, his ability the way that we're seeing it, you know, right now. I mean, if the situation didn't happen with Tyrod Taylor and the doctors, That's you true. know, that they were planning on letting him sit you know, and kind of just yeah. learn and observe. And then boom, he got through in the fire and people were like, what in the <laughs> world? Like, like how is about this? That. Yeah. Like this guy is unbelievable. So for him to get thrown in the fire last year, I, I I'm, I'm, you know, guessing, you know, it sped his process up as far as learning the position, learning defenses and all those type things to where in the, when you're in the moment, he probably didn't have nothing to rely on, but I know I got a strong arm and I can make every throw. Like, I don't care what defense you win, you know. And so until I figure out that part, I'm going to just, you know, rely on my arm talent. Uh, but now you see his evolution, you know, starting to grow as a quarterback with him dissecting the defense, knowing, you know, where to go with the ball. And, of course, like you said, Rodney, he got weapons around him, man. If those guys were, are able to stay healthy for an entire year, there's no telling – what type of numbers uh, Justin can uh, can put up? Because I think the the entire wide receiver core only in played a full healthy group, you know, a few times this season. I know Keenan's missed a lot of time, Williams missed yeah. a lot of time, and Eckler's missed a lot of time. So you know, he's really had to rely on just his God given talent to kind of get him through some of the adversity he's faced so far uh, in his young career. Speaking yeah, and they still right now sit at the I think six seed in the yep. AFC. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Eckler, uh, I kind of see him very similar as I did, you know, the running back we just faced off against Cook, you know, kind of very similar skill sets from what I'm seeing with not only his ability to run the ball inside and out, but also come out of the backfield and make some big splash plays uh, at times and be a safety blanket for Herbert when he needs to be as well. Uh, guys, uh, uh, how do you – I don't know – how how does the defense kind of close in on 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 a running back like like Austin Eckler? Yeah, I think Eckler uh I had a pleasure of playing him last year when I was in Philly and uh you know one thing notice is just his strength. Like he's he's strong, small running back, but you know packs a a, a good punch um and does a good job at um uh, being able to lower shoulder also you know catch out the backfield as you said so you know i don't i don't know if he has the the long speed 
uh, like a, a Davin Cook, but he's an explosive runner uh, who can, uh, you know, do it all, can affect you, can can hurt you in, you know, running the ball, but also have, have the ability to catch out the backfield. You know, they, looking at film, they line up in some two running back sets and and they like both backs that they have. So, you know, 30 is going to grab our attention for sure. Uh, but yeah, he he's a, a, another weapon uh, that they that they utilize uh, often in our offense. A tough runner as well. Can break tackles, run hard. You know, he ain't going to yeah. run out of bounds on the sideline. He's going to lure that shoulder. So, yeah, yeah, definitely can see some of the similar uh, traits that him and Dalvin has. But like Rodney said, I think Dalvin's speed, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a different – that's that, that stuff that God gives you to where you ain't even got to work on it. And I think Dalvin's fast as soon as he, you know, steps his – foot on the ground when he wakes up every morning so <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh wow yeah yeah i guess so but i just i i, I usage wise i see the usage very similar you know um between between the two players obviously i agree dalvin's got that 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 quickness to be able to get to get downfield very very fast um who's the more dangerous receiver on this team is it keenan is it williams that's my question. Mm, that's a good question. It, mm -hmm. it all depends on the situation. Uh, you know, Mike is – he's going to be at the point of attack on, you know, more than likely all deep throws, you know, because of his size and catch radius. And I think Keenan Allen, you know, where he is in his career, but he he's always been a good intermediate uh, route runner, right, just controlling the inside – you see him in the slot a lot more now, um, like I said, because of, you know, his shiftiness, but also uh, he's smart. He's seen a lot. Um, and so he's a good outlet for Herbert, you know, with anything kind of in the middle of the field. And and, and Mike normally uh, does a good job at, at, at um, being a great deep threat. So it's just how they utilize them. Uh, they, they both show up um, and, and both are effective. I think I think they definitely complement each other well, and uh, I'm excited to see them just stay healthy and what they can do on the field because you almost got to pick your poison as a defense. Like you said, Mike, uh, down the field, it don't matter if he's covered or not. You know he's going to have an opportunity to catch the ball because of his radius and you know things of that neighbor nature. And then when you're talking about Keenan, he knows how to separate. He knows how to get open. I mean his route running ability and the uniqueness with how he runs his routes. It's almost like an. It's, I don't want to say unorthodox, but you know he don't run an outcut like everybody else in the league. You know he's going to put some sauce on it. You know it's going to be <laughs> some type of different you know step or different angle that you haven't mm -hmm. seen. Uh, so he's good. With with, with, with separating and uh like like Rodney said you know the intermediate routes he's great at finding ways to get open uh with his route ability route running ability so you know as a defense you almost got to pick your poison and you know just you know put guys in position and hopefully just you know hope they win their matchups absolutely um yeah I want to go flip to the other side of the ball I did not I completely for all, forgot Khalil Mack was on this team <laughs> I come and Kyle Van Noy. I, I'm, I'm like, what? What? Now, I, this, this, yeah, that's they load, just, yeah, they loaded up. They're loaded right. on defense, secondary, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, um, I think Derwin's hurt, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But they still got no, a Jake, Santa Samuel. Got hurt too. You know? Yeah. Samuel. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And then, yeah, Bosa, I think, is, is, is hurt. I think he's done, isn't he? Yeah, I was saying JC uh, Jackson, he got hurt as well. Yeah, like, that's yeah. another addition yeah. that they have. But yeah, he's hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a lot of injuries over there. So they went out and got them extra people. But um, man, uh, what do you think about? Obviously, I mean, with the, the guys that are missing, that's that's a, a big hit uh, on a defense. And you talk about next man up, but. What are your what are your thoughts about uh some specific guys like let's say Kyle Van Noy or Khalil Mack or Asante Samuel Jr. I like I'm a big fan of Asante Samuel Jr. Uh I mean he just got a a knack for being around the ball like his dad. I mean you see him play and his ball skills and the way that he, the style that he plays, you know, he's an aggressive style corner uh that's not afraid to to gamble in certain situations to see if he can get that ball. 
Uh, you know, just like there's a lot of young receivers coming into the league and having success early, I mean, it's a lot of big time corners uh, that's coming into the league that's young and, and establishing themselves early as, you know, one of the better players uh, in the secondary or in the league. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Asante Samuel Jr. for sure. Rodney, um, anyone you want to talk about on this defense that, that kind of stands out to you? Uh, no, I mean, I think we all know Khalil Mack's uh, body of work and resume speaks for himself. So, you know, you would, as a, any offensive coordinator, O-line coach, you, you're going to know where 5-2 where is at. Uh, Van Doy, he, he, he's also, uh, you know, a good rusher as well. Um, you know, I remember, you know, him being in, from the Patriots and Dolphins and, and seeing him. So definitely respect his game. And, and Samuel, uh you know, I have caught uh, Chargers games. He shows up in the secondary as as a, a guy who one is fast. I think I, I seen him make an incredible interception on like a deep seven, and he came from like 15 yards back to to grab it, and that just shows the playmaking ability that he had. And it, it's no, it, it's not a surprise, and why that happens. You know who his dad is, uh, and you know he taught him the game and taught him everything he knows. And so you, you're seeing, you know, now it's his time and, and he's making the most of it this far in his young career. Absolutely. I'm going to get off topic of the of the game uh, right before we get into our uh, predictions for the game. I'm, I'm going to go to a different topic, kind of put you guys a little bit on, on the spot here. I'm sorry about this, but we talk about this being an offense driven league right now. Rules are all for the quarterback, all for the wide receivers. Is that disparaging to young people getting just getting into football to become come into a, a defensive secondary to play defensive secondary rather than you know say oh well I'll I'll play wide receiver or I'm gonna try to play wide receiver instead because it's easier. <laughs> no, I think I think as the rules change, you know, uh, I mean, it's changing, you know, at, at different levels as well. I mean, you watch college games and they're calling it the same way, you know, as far as that, you know, you don't have that type of, you know, that much of room for error when it comes to playing in the secondary. So I think, uh, you know, as professionals, the reason why, you know, we call them professionals because they're they're able to adjust how the game's played and, you know, change things within their game, whether it's training in the offseason, getting ready uh, for the new style of play or whatnot. I remember when um, the the leading with your head and the tackling stuff was a big deal. And you look across the league right now, everybody is tackling the way that the league wants them to tackle. For one, they're going to take your money if you're not going to do it. And then for two, when it comes to the secondary, a coach is not going to play you if you're out there getting PIs all the time. You know, if you're not able to adjust how the game is being called and played, uh, you can't really call yourself a true professional. I mean, these guys are professionals. I mean, they're, they're the, the top of the top when it comes to, you know, playing football. Like Rodney is 1% of the world that, that can do this job at a high level. So if he's not able to adjust, you know, how the game is being called or whatever the case may be, he wouldn't be in the position that he's in. So, uh, I mean, I, I think everybody's able to adjust, you know, uh, especially if you're coming into the league because, you know, you're going to, you know, play how the you're going to play your game, how the game is being called. Well, I, I was more talking like young, like get just getting into like that, middle that, school, high that, school. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. So, you know, okay. so the, guy, the guys that are starting in middle school, high school, you know, they're you're being, yeah, they're being taught how the game is being played okay. today and not how the game mm -hmm. is played 10 years ago or 15 yeah. years ago. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. My, my son, you know, if I'm fortunate to have a son, he's playing quarterback. <laughs> my, my son's that's where the money receiver. that's where the money that's where the nah, that's where the money is you good you good at all fronts you know what i'm saying no matter if you start back up you go you go you get make paid. a lot <laughs> yeah and and now they're just gonna put the red by the time you know my child's probably in the league of some sort uh, they're gonna have the red jersey on the on the quarterback. <laughs> Where you can't By touch them. Yep. Where you can't even yeah. It's getting <laughs> yep. to that point. They're gonna be able to play forever, man. Tom Brady, you're gonna see that every single year. Oh my goodness! I I, I twenty don't plus doubt. years quarterback. Right, right. All right, we're gonna we got about a minute left before we gonna uh, jump out of here. So Gerard, 
What's your pick and uh, prediction for this game? Chargers got a long flight. It's a long flight to Indy. You know, and uh, it's not like they're playing, you know, the best ball that they could possibly play. Indy's had two collapses the last two weeks, and I feel like we figure it out this week. Uh, definitely going to have to score some points. I do think that uh, Chargers are capable capable of scoring some points. Uh, so I'm going to go Colts 33, Chargers 28. Wow. 33 has been a big number the last two weeks, I'm telling yep. you. So now, now you're saying we're going to score 33. All right, I got the Indianapolis Colts beating uh, the Los Angeles Chargers as well. I think the defense holds it down for most of the game. I think the Colts will be able to run the game even without Jonathan Taylor. Um, I like what I'm seeing from Deion Jackson for the most part uh, and Moss. Um, I, I think the Colts win this 23-17. to 17. I think the defense gets a, a score in as well, uh, whether it's a fumble return, uh, like strip sack, fumble return, or an interception. Rodney, it's your turn for a pick six, my guy. Man, <laughs> I appreciate you. That's the gift we need. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Rodney, you, you, you're 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 predicting a, a win, right? Yes, sir. Of All right, get it awesome. done. Of course, by any means necessary. <laughs> any course. means necessary. Absolutely, just like what Gerard said last week. I want to thank everybody for watching. Please check us out. I'm Lawrence Owen, Gerard Powers, Rodney McLeod. This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, go Colts. Do you believe? 